Welcome to the Ken's Pool and Patio Game Show. <laughs> Win prizes such as chlorine and muriatic acid. That sounds like a fun game. <laughs> so we are here today with Brisky, here to promote our uh, Field Concert 3.0. This is interview number two in our series. So, um, Brisky, what is your real name? So, my birth given name is Rafael Cortada. Um, and in fact, actually, there's five of us in our family, and so that would make me the fifth. My dad, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, and my great-great-grandfather, who was from Puerto Rico, um, whose names were Rafael Cortada as well. But it's actually, there is a technicality with it. My grandfather ended up with the same, he's the only one with the same last name as me, as well as my dad. But my great-grandfather and my great-great-grandfather had Ignacio instead of Leon for their middle name. So technically, it would be the third, but with both, you know, first name and surname, like, we would be the fifth. Got you. Yeah. Very, very cool. Thank you. So what is your main instrument? Or, yeah, what's your main <laughs> instrument? My main instrument. <laughs> <laughs> My main instrument is, um, I, I play baritone guitar, and it was actually kind of an accident that I got into it. Um, in, in a sense that when I started playing guitar, um, I played in standard, but I, I just remembered I wanted to do something that was different from my peers uh, growing up in high school. And um, all, it's, it's interesting because a lot of my friends, they played metal. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them, they played singer-songwriter type stuff. But I just remembered when I first got into uh, heavy metal myself, I wasn't much into... I, I liked some speed metal, but then I really got into sludge metal as well. Um, mm -hmm. And it was actually vicariously through Beavis and Butthead. It was through the... Uh, uh, it was through uh, their little interludes that they would have in between, mm -hmm. you know, the little cartoons that they'd have that yeah. they would feature music videos. Yeah, and they, and, like, talk crap about them. And they would talk <laughs> crap about them. That was, for me, growing up, and for any other musician, I'm sure, like, that was their favorite part about Beavis and Butthead is discovering brand new music through, you know, uh, the series. was just uh, presenting up-and-coming artists for that time, you know, in its heyday. Mm -hmm. uh, through their show on MTV, and I remember one of the bands that was featured was a Louisiana sludge metal band called Crowbar, mm -hmm. um, and they were it was it was interesting because about Beavis and Butthead uh, they were critiquing it, and uh, it was actually Butthead that said it sounds like he was taking a dump because of his his low groans that he would have throughout <laughs> the song. I gave my heart <laughs> and soul to you. It sounded like a mega dump. Um, so, do you think part of the... So, are you, like, naturally, like, low-end instruments? Because you play bass as well, I know. Absolutely. So, uh, which yeah. did you play first? I played bass guitar first. Uh, bass guitar was my first instrument in which um, I wanted to learn everything I knew with, you know, uh, just I, I became enamored with music through bass guitar. Very cool. Um, just the low-ends attracted me just something that's deep and heavy and uh something that holds the song together um was why i gravitated to low end you know low end instruments mm -hmm. and it was because of that band crowbar um in which i adopted that low tuning because they played in b standard as well which technically that's you know it's a baritone guitar um, mm -hmm. But I had no idea. I didn't know what to call it. I just I just told people I played B standard until yeah. I actually read up more on baritone guitar mm -hmm. and realized that that's what I was playing all along. Yeah, it's a very cool range. Okay, so moving on, um, like I said, this next one's a next. Uh, this next one's a real humdinger. Um, so cereal, you know, stuff you pour milk on in a bowl. And you eat. Is it a soup? Why or why not? <laughs> I, I guess so. I mean, I can I can look at it as a soup as well. I mean, it's it's fluid and it's got chunks that are inside it similar to like Campbell's chunky chunk you know soup or whatever yeah. they call it yeah I guess it, it kind of comes down to what you defend, define as a soup and whether or not cereal is a broad enough category of its own mm -hmm. or like you said if it doesn't matter because it's all labels exactly <laughs> <laughs> so um, Brisky the name like where did you where did you bring that from so um, there was a point in my life where um you know, I was just really pissed off at my dad, and I just, uh, I, you know, and to this day, for the record, my dad and I have a really good relationship.
relationship now. But at that point, um, I just, I really didn't want to have the name in which I have. And so I adopted my mom's maiden name, which was Brisky. And Brisky, it's uh, it's a crazy spelling, of course. You've yeah. seen it. It's Yeah, I, I always have to double check every time I write it out. <laughs> <laughs> Even when I look at it, it gives me a headache. And the KCY is, I think, the real kicker, kicker in it. <laughs> Oh, Where, well, where's that from? It's uh, it's Polish. Into which, in Poland, like, if your family has less vowels in its name, you know, like, back then, in the Middle Ages, your family was most likely serfs. Hmm. Like, that would look, you know, they were just peasants or farmers That's and stuff. Interesting. So, like, like they were get to have vowels. Yeah, they were just, like, they, they, they were known as the, you know, the Polish rednecks, essentially, back then, you know. <laughs> That's a fun band name. <laughs> Polish rednecks. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be my next side project, guys. Polish Stay red- tuned next year in the summer. <laughs> Polish rednecks. So, um, what made you decide to start doing Brisky as a thing? Do you just do you have songs that you just wanted to get out there? Or was it always in mind as a solo project? Like, you know, it's it's funny because I didn't necessarily just wanted to be a solo project myself. I just wanted to play in a band so bad. And I remember my friends were in bands. I wanted to play music. Um, with them or you know people that I meet along the way and I didn't I didn't really intend on doing it on my own until um, I I, it was it was just kind of like a dry well essentially you know a dry water well in which I was not able to reach the stream of people Mm -hmm. Um, you know I had to you know continue to dig the well and I kind of did it on my own with just my research and um, just writing random chords and uh, and listening to different bands, mm-hmm. um, and then I met a whole bunch of open micers, you know, in the Vancouver open mic scene, in which I was yeah. able to connect with and uh, and to relay different tidbits and facets of music, mm-hmm. uh, to which I started to you know start to create my own you know my own ident- you know my own identity I guess. Also, like speaking of how you were in a solo project, you're also in another band. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, the music that I play now it's more alternative country and um, kind of focus focuses more on like Neil Young, Beck, Mojave Three, mm-hmm. and and it wasn't actually until um, I was working as a, a, a caregiver mm-hmm. uh, facility that I remember I used afterwards I used to go out to the Shanahan's open mic mm-hmm. and I remember one of the nights um, a friend of ours uh, at the open mic scene uh, in, at Shanahan's uh, his name is Tony Kern and I just remembered he invited me to his birthday party cut to next scene you know I was working that day and it was the day that of his birthday party which it ended up going out until like two o'clock in the morning and uh, possibly later and I remember I got off of work it was a 14-hour shift um, in the house with my guys, I was exhausted, and I didn't know if I was going to actually make it to, you know, his his birthday gathering, essentially mm-hmm. his kickback that he was having inside his garage, listening to vinyl, smoking weed, drinking beer, and it something changed my mind, and I said, you know what, I'm going to go out, and I didn't arrive until like 10:30 out to Camus, 10:30 or somewhere within the hour, you know, or Wait. after that, it was later on. Um, and I showed up and there were four other guys that were there hanging out with him and uh, I just remember across inside the kickback zone you know there was um, you know right across from me was this guy and I remember he heard me talking about playing guitar and he mentioned that he was trying to start this pop punk band and uh, with two of his other buddies and they play guitar and uh I was like, that's really cool. Uh, he's like, you guys have music? He's like, yeah, we have some short demos. Mm-hmm. Um, we have some demos, and I can send him vicariously through Facebook, and uh, and you can take a listen to him. Just, he was looking for a bassist, and uh, and I had told him, well, bass guitar is actually my first instrument, and um, I'm, I'm kind of curious to seeing what kind of music you guys have. And uh, he's like, well, here, just listen to the demos and uh, check them out, see if you like them. And uh, I remember the day after that, I listened to the demos, and I liked what they had going on, and uh, we scheduled a date to where I came out for a formal audition with them. And uh, if you ask Robert and Jake, uh, and I remember after, after the audition, they, like within two hours, they, they said, you know you got the part, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so that band is now 
since then you did you have a vocalist at that time already or no so it was funny because um as soon as they inducted me into the band um it was it was just the four of us it was uh spencer the drummer uh spencer rule uh jake ellis on lead guitar and robert neal on rhythm guitar who wrote the majority of the songs um this was robert's project initially and then they had me play bass actually before i say i never actually asked you what the name of that other band is oh human eyes human eyes Check oh shit out. uh yeah. should i take my shirt sweatshirt off no so before you were talking as a um, you're saying that Neil Young was one of your influences. What might be some other influences, and like, how would you say they've influenced your music? Absolutely, Neil Young is is um, he's one of my f- what am I saying? He's my absolute favorite singer songwriter. Um, just he's put out f- over forty five albums. Wow. Um, each one is different, and it just goes on. You know, the genre in which he release you know releases each CD or vinyl, and just goes by Neil's whim all-time favorite musician and so some other artists that you know brisky that um i've i've picked up along the way are um mojave three which they're another alternative country band um whiskey town and then even bands outside of my genre and i have drawn more than just alternative country to the mix yeah uh, it, like for instance i'll listen to the posies i'm a huge posies fan uh that 90s jangle alternative rock um mm-hmm. which has that reminiscence 1960s feel to it yeah ride you know which is a shoegazer band um mm-hmm. huge fan of them it's it's very cool seeing a like if you looked at your setup you'd probably think that you're like an acoustic like really simple like folk guy until you see the pedal board yeah and you're like okay i'm interested and then you're like you have this whole like almost punk influence to what you do at the same time it still stays in that like really like you know it has that like you know that definite kind of country that you definitely have a lot more than just that thing and i almost i almost would call you something like freak folk or something like freak that. folk freak folk i could deal with that um how would you describe your writing process you know i notice sometimes i like to go out to um i'll go out to Wintler, um out towards the columbia river or um I know one of the common places uh, that I just absolutely love to go to, um, in which I know for a fact I'll get solitude, it's called Merrill Lake, and it's right next to Mount St. Helens, and I'll just sit out there with my notebook, I'll have my guitar with me, and um, typically with the songwriting process, I'll say a couple of lines in which I think are, in which I feel like have a ring to it. And then I'll just kind of build on to that. And I won't even know what the song's about until, like, I write some more lyrics to it. And then just kind of determine what it's about at the end of the process, essentially. Very interesting. That's a pretty unique way of writing where it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, it kind of grows into what you want it to be. (laughs) How has music affected your personal life and vice versa? Um, so it's, it's, it's just a good cathartic outlet. Um... You know, when you're done with work, you just want to find something to confide to, and um, and sometimes I just I like to confide in my guitar. I'd love to just engage more with recording the songs that I've already written, mm-hmm. um, which I have plenty of songs in which I would love to make an album, um, a couple of albums actually I can make um, yeah. with all the songs that I've written. What would you say are some um, noteworthy shows that you've played? One of the one of the best shows that we, I've ever played as Brisky uh, was at the Backroads with Andrew Tedder. And if I recall, it was like in springtime, or no, it was summer. It was actually summer. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't remember the exact date, but uh, Tedder and I played the show. I opened up, and Tedder... Uh, shortly followed after that and we both got a really good response the whole entire house was full it, it was it was hospitable people were enjoying the music um, it was it was a nice atmosphere it was a good time it was a great time and uh, Tedder did fantastic as well mm-hmm. um, very very pleased with uh, just the overall outcome of the night what's something unique about your band or your music you know um, I, I want to take it to the perspective of what I've heard from people rather than from myself. I came in uh, for the first time, first time ever playing open mic up here at the Brick House. Um, and 
I was at some point on the list, and it was my turn to go up. And uh, Rick was doing sound check, and I remember I just did one strum of like an E chord, and uh, and it was buzzing just a little bit, but not so much. And uh, he asked me, "What what the hell tuning are you in?" And I was like, "I'm in B standard." I just said it plain as day. I'm in B standard. <laughs> he's like, he's like, you know, your strings are gonna be flopping around and shit. And I was like, uh, trust me, tr like just. Trust me, like I, this is how I play guitar, you know, and and I, I just I just blew away, I just I just, you know, blew away three songs, and uh, afterwards I spoke to Rick, and he was like, you know, that's that, that it sounds fits. all right, it fits. Yeah, it fits, it's it's all right, you're you know, this is this is okay. Interviews, I'm gonna just ask for you to plug yourself here. What's some social media you have, somewhere people can find you? Uh, so you can find me on uh, Facebook. I have uh, a brisky page. Can you spell it for him? It, yes, I have to absolutely spell it for you guys. It is B R Z Y K C Y. That's B R Z Y K C Y. That's B R Z Y K C Y. That's B R Z Y K C Y. Yeah, it's also going to be in the title of this video, so you can also copy paste that. I just realized. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, other do you have things other than Facebook? Uh, so I have an in, uh, Instagram as well. Fun. It'll be tagged in this Instagram post if you follow Sunflower on Instagram, so hopefully you do that. It'll be linked up with that, um, and that's about it, actually. Um, yeah. Mostly Facebook, though, I think. Mostly Facebook, yeah. If, uh, if anything, uh, find me on Facebook uh, on BRZYKCY. That's BRZYKCY. That's BRZYKCY. That's BRZYKCY. If you call within the next 10 minutes. Order now, and you'll get a free harmonica song 